On December 1st, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln addressed Congress. At that time, he had no way of knowing if his countrymen or the world would accept his proclamation. In giving freedom to the slave, he asserted, we assure freedom to the free, honorable alike in what we give and what we preserve. We shall nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope of earth. Other means may succeed. This could not fail. The way is plain, peaceful, generous, just. A way which, if followed, the world will forever applaud and God must forever bless. We will never truly know Abraham Lincoln's personal motivation for crafting the Emancipation Proclamation, and perhaps his reasons are of no consequence today. I get leadership lessons from Abraham Lincoln. I don't always look at him in terms of, you know, the person who freed the slaves. I look at him in terms of he had a country that was really falling apart, and he did what he needed to do to keep the country together. I really think he, he lived his convictions and did what he thought was needed to be done. Lincoln was an absolute genius in the sense that he knew that he had to do things in due time, and if he rushed into it, that everything would collapse and there would be no hope of equality for all. On September 17, 1862, 22,717 soldiers were killed or wounded at a place called Sharpsburg. The Battle of Antietam was the single bloodiest day in American history. Yet despite immense losses, this battle gave Lincoln the perceived military success he needed to emancipate the slaves. I mean, the risk was significant. And he had to step up to the plate and go deep inside to his heart and know that that was the right thing to do. Abolitionists in the North, including Frederick Douglass, urged Lincoln and ridiculed Lincoln for not moving fast enough, for not doing it sooner. And Lincoln took a lot of abuse, a lot of heat, a lot of ridicule. Here is a person who is just so courageous from his youth, to his teenage years, to his adulthood, um, and the person who could actually care for people and bring them to another place. On March 17, 1865, President Lincoln addressed veteran soldiers of the 148th Indiana Regiment. Whenever I hear anyone arguing for slavery, I feel a strong impulse to see it tried on him personally. 29 days later, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Ultimately, um, I think the, the nation has mourned Lincoln primarily then because he did so much and and uh, collectively as a nation we couldn't thank him. People like us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for somebody like this. Through a unique collaboration with the National Archives in Washington, D.C., the Henry Ford was granted the privilege of displaying the actual Emancipation Proclamation for 36 hours. The Henry Ford planned and prepared for this once-in-a-lifetime event, but had no way of knowing how many people would come to see it or the impact it would have on those who did. I sat in a meeting the week before while we were deciding how we were going to sort of logistically manage not having any idea, and I looked at our team and I said, what are we expecting? And they said, we could have thousands go through the door. But how many thousands? What do you prepare for? You, you know, I really didn't know what the response would be. Would it be like it is in other cities? Would, would people of color come out? Would, would white people come out? Would, 
Arab Americans come out. I was very uncertain about who would show. Would it just be history buffs? At 7 o'clock p.m., June 20th, 2011, the Henry Ford opened its doors to the public free of charge. Today is a special day at the Henry Ford. It is wonderful to welcome you here tonight to what truly is a once-in-a-lifetime event. The Emancipation Proclamation. This document, I can assure you, is more than a piece of paper. And what happened over the next 36 hours was nothing short of inspiring. Nearly 22,000 people peacefully waited in line for up to eight hours to view Lincoln's proclamation. The number of visitors nearly matched the casualties of Antietam. On they came, people of all ages and from diverse backgrounds. People just started streaming in the museum entrance. There's no other word I can use to describe it. I know a lot of people waited long hours to see it. I mean, there were young white kids, young black kids. Family after family, old people, young people, disabled, abled. It was just astonishing to me how many people came. But moreover, it was just such a, a, a unique spirit inside the museum. Actually, it hit me in the chest when I walked through the doors because I was taking in the whole atmosphere. You know, there was music performance going on, very soul-stirring music. And I'd walked through the museum and saw all these people waiting. On they came, not to debate history or civil injustice, but to take part in something larger than themselves. I was so moved by the comments that we heard from people. One woman had commented, I've been on my feet for seven hours, but slavery was a lot longer. And after all of that, they would, they would come up just before they saw the document and they were thanking us. It was all inspiring and, and powerful and emotional. It was the whole atmosphere of just seeing so many diverse and different people just standing in line waiting was amazing. What we saw from all the people was a snapshot of our country. It was a snapshot. We had every age, we had all ethnic races, we had everything. For most of us, the Henry Ford provided a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, perhaps not to celebrate the writ of a president, but rather to experience its legacy as citizens and historians, people and parents. All people should rejoice in what was behind that document, because on that day, in that time, America became a better place. What it means for us today is school children, know who Lincoln was, know who he is in terms of his legacy. With my children, them to see the Emancipation Proclamation firsthand is probably the most uh, inspiring thing I've done for a brief moment of grace. And they understood what it was like for a man to be courageous and to put forward his ideas and thoughts for other people, to save people, to stop the killing, to stop the injustice, to stop the silencing of people's voices, and to give them freedom, the promise of the Declaration of Independence. You know, I am having chills just sitting here talking about it. 148 years ago, President Lincoln signed this, and we still have it. We still believe it, given how crazy things are, how diverse we are, that we've survived this long with that proclamation being one of our, our standard documents. In freedom, we are all united. And that's Lincoln's legacy. And that happened to thousands of people.